Okay. If I could have everyone's attention, please. If we could place our cell phones on silent or vibrate, and if you have to take a call, please step outside. At this time, I'd like to bring the Indian Trail Town Council meeting for Tuesday, December 11th, 2018, to order. If everyone would please rise for a pledge. Mr. Lane, would you please lead us in the pledge? Attention. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone still remains standing. I'm going to yield the moment of silence to Mr. Wayne. If you'd like to say something. I guess word of prayer. Our great, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and for the ones that are here. Help us to do everything in our what? Their sight, and I will. And bless the families of our deceased, Mr. James Crum, and the wife of uh, Sheriff Daddy Kathy. Give the families in their hope and prayer. Keep them safe and sound. We ask all this in thy name. Amen. 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 Everyone may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Lane. As everyone is well aware, we've had a tragic week here in Indian Trail. We've lost um, Mr. Crump and um, Mrs. Kathy, if we keep them all in our prayers. Um, during public comments, I'll, if Bill, you would give the funeral arrangements for Mr. Crump. Thank you. Well, you, if you, yeah, you, we might as well let him do that right now. Since he might, you, you're gonna stay for, for the public comments? I'll let yeah. you do it then. I'll call, I'll call you back. Okay. okay. All right, this time, is there any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? I have oh. I'd like to add uh, four, D, four Ds, uh, Sun Valley High School marching band donation. Uh, Mr. Parks, then it's down for five minutes. Okay, any opposed? No. No. Uh, Mr. McIntyre is next. I have a deletion 9B. I'd like to table that to the next meeting. 9B as, B in, as boy. in boy? Yes, sir. Committee member update. Okay. Any objection? No. No, so tabled. And um, Mr. Morse. Yeah, I have one ad addition and a deletion. I'd like to delete uh, the presentation 4C, Anti-Bullying Proclamation. Okay. And in its place, I'd like to... Um, Add Reed Helms Crime Stoppers. Okay. Any opposition? Any other additions or deletions at this time? No, I need a motion to approve the amended agenda. Motion to approve. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Brings us to item presentations. Item A, UDO update. Mr. Rocks. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, tonight, I'd like to give you just a very brief update on the uh, Unified Development Ordinance Update and Land Development uh, Standards Manual. Okay, so tonight's presentation, I want to kind of outline the, some of the overreaching goals that we had for the update of these documents, uh, some of the public engagement strategies that we've had to get uh, feedback incorporated within, give you kind of a broad snapshot of the changes, and then talk about next steps. Now. The question is, uh, will this presentation give you everything you need to know? Well, when I shake the magic eight ball, the answer to that question is no. <laughs> uh, what we're, t we're just trying to give you a broad overview and uh, set the stage potentially for a more detailed discussion during a workshop environment, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that uh, later in this presentation. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the goals for the uh, documents. We want to create a UDO that addresses um, some housekeeping changes uh, that we have. The UDO has been tested over the course of around 10 years. Uh, Post-recession, we've had a lot of good projects uh, be processed under the UDO, so we kind of were able to see some of its strengths as well as some of its flaws. 
uh, create a document that's uh, user friendly. Uh, that's not only for us, but it's also for our customers, our the design professionals, the developers. So it's more easy to access that information, and also something that's more in tune with market trend and industry trends. Uh, you know, it's you know, we work in an evolving uh, space, and we the documents need to evolve with the changing in, t uh, in time. Other things uh, we need to uh, take into account is compliance with uh, changes in state law as well as case law. And uh, of course, making processes simpler and also incorporating stakeholder feedback, which I'm going to talk about uh, in more detail. Okay, so with any major endeavor like this, you want to have a public engagement uh, program or stakeholder feedback so you uh, make sure you're you know, dr addressing the community's needs and producing the best document possible. So early on, we convened a group of stakeholders, uh, roughly 80 participants uh, in this program. And really, we threw the net kind of far and wide within the Indian Trail community uh, for folks that work with the UDO or work with the town in, in some for form of real estate or development capacity. So we spoke with d developers, designers, um, architects, engineers, surveyors, real estate professionals and contractors, business owners. We even uh, talked to HOA representatives, representatives of the nonprofit community, uh, other government agencies like Union County, DOT. Uh, we brought in our boards and committees and also had uh, town staff engaged in that process. Uh, and, and we compiled all of this uh, feedback we received into a report that's on our website for public viewing. Um, but again, the idea is to get as much feedback as possible at the early end regarding what's working well with the UDO in, in, in the land development standards and what's not working well. So that's, that was kind of an initial kickoff uh, step to give us some early feedback. But to kind of give us more information as we continued through the update process, we formed a steering committee. And again, the steering committee kind of served as a sounding board as new uh, changes were developed or new ideas were thought about. Uh, we wanted a group uh, that could give us that feedback if it's a good idea or a bad idea or, or how we could do something better. So again, we, got, we cast a net fairly wide. Uh, we brought in folks from the planning board, the transportation committee, engineers, developers, uh, someone from the Realtors <coughs> Association, a Chamber of Commerce representative, as well as HOA representation. Again, we wanted some broad feedback on whether or not we're heading down the right path or not. So let me go ahead and, and give you kind of a snapshot of some of the changes we made. And as you expect, you know, we, we, we made just kind of some very pedestrian minor changes that you would expect to in updating any document. We effect, uh, tried to address irregularities, you know, just it, you know, things that aren't worded very well or just were outright wrong. We try to improve standards here and there based on that testing that we've been doing over the past 10 years. We also tried to make things a little easier by doing text to table conversions and also enhancing some of our existing tables. And I'll give you some examples of that. So here's a section of the code that talks about how uh, you can um, construct an accessory structure like a shed or a, or a deck, a uh, storage building, something like that. And it's, it's a, a page worth of text that doesn't necessarily read very well. And we took this, made a few tweaks, and put it all into a table so it's much easier to read. Now, again, not only for staff, but also for you know, the homeowner or the contractor that needs to interpret it in developing the, the, the correct plans. We also have what's called a table of uses in our UDO. This is a table where um, you know, a realtor or a developer would go to look to see if a uh, particular uh, activity is permitted on a property based on its assigned zoning district. We have four different tables, uh, multiple pages in length, <clears throat> and they look similar to what you're seeing on the screen. Not necessarily bad, but not ne also not very exciting or, or very visually oriented, particularly thinking about you know, being on a smartphone or tablet. You know, how, that's not gonna translate very well. So we took all these various tables we had for the uses, and we consolidate into a single table and incorporate some industry colors uh, into it. Again, not only does it put this information in one, in one place, it makes it visually oriented. So whether you're looking at a paper document or a, a laptop or tablet type um, environment. So we think we, this uh, is gonna be very helpful and, and well received. But you know, with, with this big of a project, we also want to tackle some major changes. You know, one of the things we want to do is simplification in the ordinance. Uh, we wanted to, I, I talked about the use table. One of the things that we did is simplified it and cut it down so it's not so lengthy and, and just try to use more simple terminology in terms of how we describe business activities so it's easier for that <coughs> realtor or contractor to understand what they can or can't do with a given piece of property. We simplified public notifications for public meetings. Uh, we addressed some procedural items regarding how you get a permit or how you go through the approval process. 
we pulled out administrative items from the UDO, like you know the number of copies you need to submit for a given permit, and put the, we're going to put that in a separate uh, document to keep the UDO nice and simple and streamlined. And we're going to uh, also look towards uh, eliminating special use permits. We've also gone ahead and, and uh, proposed reducing the number of zoning districts. We've gone from roughly 14 districts down to 10. We think that's, again, going to make things simpler uh, for our community. We're also looking at phasing of larger projects. We took a big, st uh, a big uh, set of updates for our signed ordinance, particularly for temporary signs, and spent a lot of time really discussing this with our steering committee in terms of balancing aesthetics versus business needs. And this is one of those changes that was needed uh, to address some case law that, that came up a couple years ago. We've also updated our design guidelines for how multifamily industrial buildings are developed and also made some changes to adapt to our downtown, uptown development vision to make sure that when you know, construction does start, we, get, we achieve our goals for what we want to see in the downtown, uptown area. And then we've also wanted to create some more rezoning options. You know, the council sees a lot of rezonings every year and we want to create some options that uh, might be a little more streamlined for uh, applicants. And so we're, and we'll talk more about this in the future, but we've created what's called a, a mini conditional rezoning process, as well as something called a voluntary alternative district. Again, we don't have to go into that here. There'll be another, uh, another opportunity to discuss those in detail. But again, we're really trying to look for some innovative concepts and uh, also look for efficiencies. Uh, so let's talk about next steps. So again, our first goal is to have uh, you know, some more detailed conversations with town council, you know, possibly in a workshop environment. We'd love to hear any particular topics that you would like staff to cover in more detail. It's, a, again, a four or 500 page document, so you know, we certainly don't want to walk you through every page unless that's what you want. Uh, but so if there's any specific topics you want, please let us know and we'll, we'll be happy to drill down in those in greater detail. We hope to receive a consolidated draft from our consultant in January. Um, we plan on meeting with the steering committee one last time with this consolidated document around the January, February time frame. Uh, we want to have a public review of this document, so putting it on the website and other, and other locations so the general public can have a viewing of it if they are interested. Uh, I, we know our town attorney wants to um, also take a look at it and put some, uh, some, make some changes as well, that some ideas that they want to kind of have fleshed out. And then ultimately we'll go through the adoption process where the planning board provides a recommendation and ultimately the town council will be asked to ad adopt the, uh, the UDO and land development standards. <coughs> so that's uh, a broad overview of kind of where we've been and where we are and where we're heading on the UDO and land development standards update. And again, this isn't meant to cover everything as the Magic 8 Ball said. Uh, so we are just want to give you an early snapshot and hopefully have more detailed discussions uh, at a future date. Is there any, any questions for me? Thank you, Rox. That brings us to the Rotary Club, Mr. Helms. Well, good evening. As you see, um, <clears throat> the way you lead a, a group of people like this, you got to run hard to stay ahead of them. So. I want to recognize our whole club, and we'll get you up here in just a minute to get a picture, hopefully, if that's okay. Uh, first, I want to thank you for having such a nice town hall here. This is a class act for anybody, and, and we appreciate that. We secondly appreciate you letting us have our rotary meetings, because everybody becomes so shocked when they come to Indian Trail and they see where we have our rotary meetings. And I said, well, it only costs $400 a week, but it's okay. No, it doesn't, but uh, I'm joking with that. But thank you. It really does make a big difference. It's great meeting room. Uh, I commend you on doing the uh, Veterans Memorial. To me, that's one of the things that this country needs tremendously. And one of the reasons we, as a Rotary Club, have stepped up and wanted to share with you that... Um, we are tired of people not understanding how to respect the flag, how to respect the national anthem, and how they don't understand that freedom is not free. And that we are hoping, with a, we wrote a grant, we, Myra, raise your hand. There were several of us on the grant process. Uh, I wrote what I could, and Myra, an English teacher, cleaned it up, said, now it can be presentable. 
But anyway, uh, we part of our grant is to invite schools, children, and whatever grade we can get here so that we can share those three functions that we just talked about. And uh, so what we did, the Rotary Club, and this money doesn't come easy, put $10,000 uh, $10, to, to add to your fund to build this uh, memorial. And we also asked for a grant of $10,000, and we got a grant of $10,000. And we also went to uh, one of the largest churches here in Indian Trail, and they provided $1,500 Indian Trail First Baptist. So what we'd like to do tonight, and they won't let me share it by myself, so I got the whole group here, and we would like to present to you $21,500 to go toward the building, the uh, memorial that you're doing to respect our veterans and to hopefully respect our flag, our national anthem, and also understand that freedom is not free. So if you can, we would like to bring everybody together and get a picture with uh, whoever, I guess the mayor and uh, town manager there, he's the one that's pushed us so hard <laughs> so, uh, uh, but we commend you, truly do commend you because you're making a big, big statement in our community, not just Indian Trail, but our county and our region. So if it's okay, we'll bring our group together here and, and, and left to have the council come around too and we'll present the, the, however you want to do it, yeah. So let's do that. I understand we're getting videoed so we can, Oh, well, there. Rotary, stop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hold on one second, please. Come stop. Back. Just stop. Come back. Just come back. Ask everybody to come in for a second. 
We just want to say on behalf of the council, thank you for all your hard work over the years you've given to the town and your continued support. We're very honored to have you as part of Indian Trail and appreciate this generous donation for the Veterans Memorial. May it stand for long, forever, and may it stand proud. Thank you for being our partner. six weeks, Adam, and we'll collect all the names that need to be in here. Just want to let you see that. Thank you. That's very nice. Did you do that? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. That brings us to the Sun Valley High no. School. Oh, what? Reed Helms Cram Stoppers. That's after that. What? That's after that. It's C. All right. E. Well. I mean. All right. Sun Valley High School Marching Band Donation, Mr. Parks. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Mayor and Council and audience to Lindsley with the uh, Sun Valley High School Marching Band. She's going to talk to you guys a little bit about a great honor that's been bestowed on the band and see if there's anything that we could do to help them. So the floor is yours. Hi, guys. Thank you guys for having me here. My name is Lindsley Higgs and I'm a senior at Sun Valley High School. I am the band council president and I'm the drum major for the Sun Valley Spartan Sound. Our marching band performs at all home and away football games, competes at local and regional marching band competitions and marches in three parades. Matthew's alive in September, the Monroe Christmas Parade no in November and the Indian Trail Christmas Parade in December. Routinely, we achieve excellent superior ratings in both marching and concert band performances, as well as numerous first place awards in marching band for music, effect, color guard, percussion, and drum major. This year, we are given the honor of marching in the 2019 New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York. While in New York, we will take a tour of the 9-11 Memorial uh, of the Radio City Music Hall, we will visit Times Square and Rockefeller Center, and we will also see the Broadway musical Wicked. For almost all of the band members, this will be their first time in New York City, and for also many of them will be their first time out of North Carolina. The cost of the trip is almost, in total, $60,000. About 12000 of that cost is for charter bus transportation. Our band members and the Van Booster organization have been working to raise funds and to help offset our costs for the past few months. We are hoping to bring in enough donations to at least cover our transportation costs. We're here today asking the Indian Trail Council for some sort of sponsorship or help or donation. And if you guys have any questions, I'm here along with a band mom, Sarah Sharman, or Ms. Sharman. <laughs> They respond, usually respond after the public, uh, well, well, no, it's a presentation, sorry. Council, you have any questions for the young lady? No? Okay. She was in the band just recently for the Christmas program. Yes, ma'am. Very nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Typically, uh, council, according to council rule, anyone requesting such a donation is put on the next month's agenda first agenda of the next month. So this, Patrick, if you would add this to as, a, as an agenda item. Taken care of. Uh, the only question I have, when is the trip? The trip, it begins on March 15th and we'll be back on March 17th, I believe. Okay, so we have plenty of time. Okay. When is the deadline for you to kind of make all your final payments and so forth? February. February. We have plenty of time. So we have time. Okay. Yes, we'll explain to her that the next time we meet, we'll okay. a decision on that. First meeting in, in January, which is January the 8th. Um, it'll be on the agenda. Okay. Okay? okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next presenter, Reed Helms, Crime Stoppers. <coughs> Welcome, Reed. Mayor, councilman, staff, 
My name is Reed Helms, born and raised in Union County, right one in the trail. Born on a cotton farm. My daddy had a nine-row cotton picker, Captain Mama. Uh, I've been involved in Crime Stoppers since 1981. It is a national organization. Uh, we do a, this is my 27th year doing a Crime Stoppers barbecue. That is our only fundraiser. And we have spent out a lot of money over the years. And Crime Stoppers work, you have crime prevention, but this is Crime Stoppers. We have a tip line, and that's where we get information. We pay up to $5,000 for reward. The most recent, I've got a lot of cases here, the most, some of the most violent cases was a lady at the Monroe Mall, kidnapped, nine months pregnant, kidnapped, robbed, raped, and a tip come in, the man's now serving a life sentence. Uh, as of March the 1st this year, <clears throat> I had 54 years in law enforcement. 30 active, 24 reserved, under Sheriff Frank McGuirk and uh, Eddie Cathy. And uh, if y'all will remember Eddie Cathy, very close friend. Uh, I didn't know it a while ago till Mr. Larry Helms told me that Mr. Uh, S.A. Flo was on the city council here. And on uh, September the 6th, 2017, somebody broke in robbed him, stabbed him to death, and uh, 88 years old, in good health, 88 years old, and the crime went dormant. We run an ad in our local Inquirer Journal that Crime Stoppers pays up to $5,000, and on February the 28th of this year, he is now in jail charged with first-degree murder because of a tip. And we paid that tipster $5,000. We paid one of $5,000 in Monroe. Uh, we, we pay rewards every month in the school system. Knives, guns, prescription drugs, cocaine, marijuana. Oh, I gotta say, uh, I can't say marijuana anymore. I have to say recreational marijuana, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, that's what we're all about. I could name you many, many more cases and I'll finish up with this on the most violent case I ever worked and was involved in. It's very sad. Children. It's hard to take children. But this guy in Unionville, was in front of some of his friends, was going to uh, Monroe to get him some cocaine. And he went to Monroe, and he bought his cocaine. He came back in front of his friends, and they snorted, and they snorted, and nothing happened. And one of his guys said, let me see that. He said, oh, man, they ripped you off. You got flyer. You didn't get cocaine. So what he does, he gets a bow and arrow out. And he goes back. He said, I'm going to kill that guy. And he went back, and what he thought was the guy that sold him the cocaine, and that arrow hit a 12-year-old girl in her aorta. She was dead for all practical purposes before she ever got to the hospital. We got a tip on that. That man's now serving a life sentence, and he will never be paroled. Uh, we have a Crime Stoppers barbecue the third Friday in every January for 27 years. It's at the Agriculture Center. <clears throat> we have a little entertainment, uh, good food, and we would I'm, uh, see if y'all would get involved in it. I got Wingett involved in it, Marshall involved in it, the county involved in it, and Monroe involved in it. <coughs> Like y'all get. By the way, y'all are the biggest municipality in Union County. According to our sheriff, about 4,000. Monroe 34, y'all 38. And according to the sheriff at our swearing in ceremony last Monday, Union County is 234, I think. So we've paid out a lot of money. Would love to have some help. Would love to have you get involved in our Crime Stoppers program because we're going to continue it because it does solve a lot of crimes. How much are the tickets? Ten dollars. Okay. We sell hundreds, we sell thousands, we take donations. Thank you for your invite, Mayor. Any questions? <coughs> okay, that brings us to the uh, public comments portion. 
Thank you for your interest in participating in the public comments <coughs> portion of today's regular meeting of the Indian Trail Town Council. Please be aware that these meetings are recorded and can be heard by anyone through the internet. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. You may not give your three minutes to another speaker to increase that person's allotted time. Comments are to be directed to the entire council as a whole and not individuals. Citizens will be expected to be civil in their language and presentation and act within reasonable standards of courtesy. We ask the audience as well as the speakers to maintain order and decorum in your conduct throughout the public comment period. That being said, you may not engage in slander, name calling, personal attacks, or threatening or otherwise aggressive speech or behavior that I or council reasonably believe will imminently result in a disruption of the meeting. Finally, we ask you a simple favor. If you have a grievance, concern, or complaint relating to a specific town employee, respectfully at respect, we respectfully request that you that prior to grieving it, airing that grievance here during public comments, you first contact the town manager, the town attorney, or one of us on council with your concern. We respect your right to be heard, and we ask you to respect our town employees' rights to a fair hearing on your grievance. First up, Gordon Daniels. Yes, I'm Gordon Daniels, 1020 Woodcock Lane. Thank you, um, uh, Mayor and Council, for accepting me. Um, I had three things on my um, my public comment. One was to wish everybody on the council and the staff season greetings. Uh, my second thing I had was to a condolence to the Crump and to the Catholic family for their loss. And the third thing I had on the um, public comment was just to mention that in March of 2016, I put in a request for a PIR. Um, that at the time I was told that the scope was very large. So I scaled the scope down from here to here. And then I even scaled it down from here to here. I just want to make the, uh, the current council aware that the scope went from here down to here, but I still have not received my PIR. And um, I've been patient. And March of 2019 will be three years. That's a, that's a long time. I think you will agree that's a long time to wait for PIR. So I'm hoping that by March of 2019, we don't get to the three-year anniversary. Um, I think I've been patient, but I just want to make this current council aware that the scope has been reduced twice. And hopefully by then I will receive something. Thank you. Michael Falkenberry. Good evening, Michael Falkenberry, 519 Pickett Circle. Uh, thank you, Rotary Club, for your donation. I'm sure it's much appreciated. My condolences to Mr. Crump and Mr. Kathy as well, uh, and their families at this time. I want to also thank the Rotary Club for what just happened. My public comments was going to address, when you recognize new businesses, you all the mayor will do is say, come get your plaque. I think it has more respect when you have the business owners come to the front, have the council come up and greet them, handshakes, and get a photograph taken. I think it means a whole lot more to have that picture in their business, especially when they're starting an Indian Trail to help the economy and economic development. Also, council isn't willing to pay $15,000 to remove a median in Braxton Crossing. But however, they are entertaining the possibility of paying 20% of $4 million for a one mile segment of Indian Trail Road for this downtown project. Again, uh, where is this money gonna come from? Even if you sell the old property for three hundred thousand, you're still going to have to come up with five hundred thousand dollars, between five hundred thousand and eight hundred thousand. That's a big chunk of money, isn't it? Plus, you got Chestnut Parkway still on the books, which that can be used to revamp downtown. You have a blank canvas. I've mentioned this for the last four years. So, rejuvenating this, renovating this whole area, it's cheaper to do that from the very beginning. Also. If the $10 million is taken away from NCDOT, that shows that they only have one thing in, in, in mind, just to take advantage of this town. When I campaigned in 2013 and 2015, I asked the question, how much highway can you get widened for 10 million? Three quarters of a mile, that's it. Three quarters of a mile. Bring that up to them next time you meet with them. That's not very much, is it? Even a former town manager suggested just widen the road from Brandon Oaks Parkway to Sun Valley. It's been useless. That had no, uh, wouldn't accomplish anything. There's no traffic there. 
at that time anyway, four years ago. Also, marketing the town. Why bother when you have a finance director when he writes or he agrees that an investigation should take place for the town of Indian Trail? Is that a good image for the town of Indian Trail? That's how, how you market the town. And if anything, it shows, uh, under, it shows that you really don't really understand what's going on or you're really confused as to what has happened in the past. But I really, uh, I've also mentioned this to Mr. Evans, that needs to be taken off of Facebook, that comment, that like. Also, in the last council meeting, it was uh, addressed that the, uh, the, the, the mayor's gonna come to uh, help the residents with this Monroe road widening. Okay, that's fine. But in 2017, it was all doom and gloom. No effort was made to come to Pat for those residents. And I was wondering around that. And in closing, I went to the Stalin's council meeting last night. Time's up. Thank you. Bill Lay, if you would step to the podium. And If you would care to give the funeral arrangements for Mr. Crump. Okay, the arrangement for Mr. Crump. His visitation is tomorrow evening from five to eight at uh, Life and Legacy Funeral Home in Sun Valley. Thursday morning, we'll meet at the post at 9.30. They'll, the hearse will be there with the casket along with the caisson. The casket will take out of the hearse and place on the caisson. We will walk from the post up to First Revenue Church of Indian Trail, where the search will be uh, done, which starts at 11 o'clock. After the service, it will be put in the First, and take to Sunset Memorial Gardens, Mint Hill, where he will be in town. That's it. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> that brings us to our council portion of public comments. Does anybody have anything? Sure. Yeah. All right, Mr. Morris. Yeah, in uh, response to Mr. Daniels, um, long wait for a PIR, I would agree that two and a half years is, is without going in and knowing any details, two and a half years waiting on anything um, is, is quite a long duration. And uh, hopefully we can look at that and see if we can speed it up. And um, we'll see what we can do. Any other comments? No. Okay, that brings us to the law enforcement update. Is Captain Coble here? No. No. Is, is there no, no update tonight? Captain Coble informed us he'd be unable to make it this evening. Right. Okay, so we're going to table that? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> brings us to the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Morris made a motion. All in favor? <clears throat> Motion carries not, yeah, unanimously. That brings us to item A of old business, oh, wait, excuse me, public hearing, conditional rezoning. Uh, CZ2018080 Park Meadows. Rocks, oh, no, you're not rocks. Yep, nope, you got Katie. <laughs> All right, thank you council members and mayor. Okay, so the application before you is conditional zoning requirement for Park Meadows. The the request is to rezone three parcels, which collectively total approximately 2.37 acres in size. The property is currently zoned single-family, low-density residential, and the request is to rezone to multifamily residential. The applicant is Park Meadows Development. The intent is to construct 14 townhomes. This is a reduction from the 15 townhomes that was reviewed and recommended for approval by the planning board. The, this would be an extension of the existing Park Meadows development. It's, all, uh, it's a townhome community, which is adjacent 
located within Stallings. The density for this would be about seven units an acre. Here's a concept plan, which is also included in your packets. Again, I believe you may have the one that shows 15 units, but this again is 14 units. So you can see the units would be accessed from Bryson Road. And you can also see the location next to the, what would be the bulb out when the old, when the old Monroe Super Street extension happens. Again, if you look at the top of the screen, that would be where the existing Park Meadows development is, which is located within Stallings. And also, the Omega Coney Island restaurant is down at the bottom left-hand part of the screen off of Bryson. Here's an example of how the, how the homes would look. This is an existing photo from an existing stick of town homes within Park Meadows. You can see it has the sodding and then the masonry wrap around the bottom and also on the front facade. Here's also a rendering that they used for the previous development. Here's just a photo of, these, of the existing site. This is taken off of Old Monroe Road. And here's also, if you're looking, if you're standing uh, on Bryson Road and you're looking both up and down the road, so looking toward Old Monroe Road. Here's the vicinity map. It gives you an idea of where this is in location to Old Monroe and Bryson and then certainly also the adjacent development in Stallings. When we look at the zoning map, uh, again, the property is single, currently single-family, low-density residential, which is yellow. So you can see it's largely uh, surrounded by ex the same type of zoning district. And also looking at the future land use map, this is located within the Old Monroe Village. One thing that you need to note about this application is that the future land use map does call for this to be medium density residential. So the planning board, when they made their recommendation, made a recommendation to amend the comprehensive plan because this is actually a bit more high density, the, uh, the way it breaks down because it is about seven units an acre. But that being said, staff still believes that this type of use is, is consistent and compatible with the surrounding properties. Community meetings, two were held on October 29th. We had four people in attendance for the afternoon meeting and no people attended, no one attended the uh, evening session. <coughs> Questions that they had include whether it involves their property, one, one individual asked about the location of the pond, whether that was wet or dry, and whether there would be a fence between two phases, between the existing phase and the, the new phase. Regarding the recommendation, Again, it's not consistent with the comprehensive plan, so if you do recommend approval of this, you would need to recommend amending the comprehensive plan to reflect that into this. The request does promote goals of the comprehensive plan in terms of quality of life and land use and housing. It is a reasonable request, and again, the planning board did recommend approval of this. They recommended approval with the condition that the buffer be strengthened between the, between the townhome that is closest to Old Monroe Road. So at this time, I'm going to read the findings into the record. All right, so quality of life goal number one, the proposed request will give the opportunity to establish a unique identity in this area by extending the existing Park Meadows community located in Stallings to Indian Trail, thereby supporting a common community design for two municipalities. Land use and housing goals number one and two, the proposed project promotes compatibility of land uses between adjacent residential communities and properties within adjacent jurisdictions, increases the diversity of housing choices within Indian Trail, and proposes high quality design to promote attractive community development. This rezoning request is reasonable and is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of quality of life and land use and housing. It is consistent with the adoptive plans within the town of Indian Trail. But again, we do also need to add the stipulation that we would need, to, if you recommend approval, that this would also amend the future land use plan. So, of course, at this time, we'll certainly, <clears throat> I, I do want to let you know the applicant is here if you have any questions for them before we get to the public hearing. And uh, I'll take any questions if you have them as well. Yes, sir. Um, the, what was the vote on the planning board in regards to this? 
They voted that it was unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. It was unanimous. <laughs> it's the Hold gig. on, I have this written down here. Unanimous. Yes, sir. Oh. Six to zero, and uh, and the recommendation was again just to strengthen that buffer. All right. Is that something that's included in the text there that um, we're going to uh, should council vote to approve this? that the buffer would be strengthened as recommended by the planning board? You can certainly make that stipulation as well. Okay, I would good. absolutely recommend that. All right. You know, I think yeah. So. Sure. And yeah, and I'm sure what Michael's going to tell you is the plans that we have before you, uh, that I have, and again, I know Kathy has the latest copy, do reflect the landscaping that's been added to the bulb out on Old Monroe Road. Yeah. Are you ready for Michael? So the, the plan I'm looking at does include that recommendation? Yes, sir. It does. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. The, the, the buffer along the uh, trail that we're adding behind that bulb out was added since the planning board. Trees, shrubs, and a two-foot high berm um, to further screen the townhomes from the roadway. That was added af after the planning board meeting. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Morris. Uh, I understand the 15 units reduced to 14 is yes, to, for the buffer, correct? Partly for the buffer and partly because the bulb out grew from DOT's progression in design. And when we, you know, when we got a new file from them, it was slightly larger, and with the link setbacks, it eliminated a 15th unit. And it looks like the access is going to be off of this road, not Monroe Road. But correct. Bryson is that road. a private road or a? It it is town maintained. State, state, state road. Yeah, Thank you. Bryson State. Yeah, okay. and this would be a private just maintained by the HOA of the alley on site. And presently, what's the, the zoning is single family one, but for, for the comprehensive plan? Um, the comprehensive plan shows it as medium density residential, which is about two to four units an acre. Any other questions? I have none. None? No more. No more? Okay, we'll need two motions. Can you put them back mm -hmm. up? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay, there's two motions, Council, if you care to make them. Okay. Anyone? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a, a motion to make the required consistency findings read into staff, read into the record by staff. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion on a consistency findings. All in favor of that? Um, Mr. Mayor, I do need to point out we need to make sure we hold the public hearing. Oh, right. That is right. At this time, I will open up the public comments portion of the hearing, and no one signed up. I will then again close them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. And then I'll make a motion that we make the required consistency findings as read into the record by staff. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion for the consistency findings. All in favor? That would be unanimous. A second motion is needed. Um, so that's where, before I make that motion, I want to ask that question. I understand. Do I, I, I'm gonna, I want to make a motion to approve this. Um, however, I want to make sure that what is captured in there is the recommendation from the planning board. I know that the, the, the design we looked at included mm -hmm. that. Um, but I want to make sure that when I make that motion, do I use that language or do I just as presented, which is what you presented showing that, that buffer being there? So that's the key question. There. Do I <laughs> state there, it or is that? There is no harm in saying that you also recommend, uh, or you are recommending approval of this request also with the recommendation of planning board, which was to make sure that the buffer is strengthened. Thank you. Yes, sir. And then that and then you recognize that this request reflects an amendment of the comprehensive plan. Right. So I want to make a, a motion um, to vote um, and approve this as presented. The request will reflect the amendment to the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan and also um, the recommendation from the planning board that the buffer be extended. Sounds good. Mr. McIntyre has made a motion to approve as presented with the stipulation that the buffer is strengthened as presented by the planning board and also acknowledges that this will reflect an amendment to the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan. All in favor? Okay, that would be unanimous. Thank you. 
Okay, that brings us to old business. Committee meeting liaison. Does anybody have an update? Mr. Head? Surely. Okay, none right now. Mr. Head? Mr. Head. Do you have one for this meeting? Yeah, from the uh, reliable growth at the last meeting, we talked about, um, uh, and I got the approval to work and, uh, jointly on uh, some storm drain cleaning uh, among the municipalities. And the meeting then was that following Wednesday, which we would have been the 28th, I think it was. Speak up. Yes, please. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, so during that meeting, we had a very good meeting. Uh, we actually have uh, another um, town representative, uh, Ms. Cherie Clark, I think that's her last name, uh, with Lake Park has joined us, um, So, which works well with what we're looking at potentially from uh, the fire tax, the, the fire department scenario that we talked about. So. Um, we agreed uh, to talk about stormwater, and uh, Patrick has agreed. He's uh, supposedly a, an expert on stormwater and can teach the class. He's been through all the courses, so we're going to have that on our next um, meeting. Uh, Public Works, I think Adam is going to be talking to Stallings um, to work with them and with Lake Park and maybe Wesley Chapel, I believe. So. Um, and, and then there was uh, a, a lot of discussion on um, next steps for the fire department, uh, which way to go. And we, we actually have um, Mike Smith uh, from Weddington uh, Council, who was uh, uh, a law enforcement officer as well as a fireman. Um, so he's been through this. They have their own uh, department, and uh, we'll, we'll be getting some uh, very valuable information from them. So. Um, just wanted to give that update that uh, you know, I think we're starting to move on, on a lot of different projects uh, going forward. And uh, uh, as al always, as we get um, to the point of making that recommendation, then we'll come, I'll come before the board or for the council for approval. So. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else have a committee update? Sure. Mr. Morse? <clears throat> um, Really had three meetings this, this past month was CRTPO, uh, really not a whole lot going on there. End of year, they're um, voting on a new chairman. And there were some procedural things uh, regarding pedestrian bike paths with some of our smaller towns here in the county, as well as the I-77 corridor study, which is uh, 68 miles. It starts up in Iredell and, and down below Rock Hill, I believe in Chester. And then um, we had the ABC meeting the following night, a oh, very good meeting. It, um, the numbers are good. They, um, they're, they're, they're ready for shoppers to, uh, the Christmas season's here. And the, um, the 74 Super Street is still, it's a challenge for them. But um, once, once they get Faith Church completed and some of the others, then we'll see if sales will be off or what the future holds. Uh, the, the last meeting that I attended was the Indian Trail Road Complete Street Stakeholders Meeting. That was last Thursday, I believe. Very good meeting, a lot of good input from, from the business owners, and, um, and it was well received by the, the staff. And the presentation was real good. Um, Todd put that on, and there'll be more forthcoming here in about a month. Uh, we'll be reconvening. and seeing what changes will be offered up and then hopefully that will be rolled out to for public comment in, in the near future I uh, didn't attend the planning board I hope someone here did I did but Sweet. it's nothing there's the, 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 the inf I attended the planning board meeting but the information that's gonna come to us really is um, one of them was something that the planning board will not uh, or staff would not approve that's one and two well staff would not recommend planning board staff the board didn't take it up and another item that um came up for discussion um but we'll see those soon and the thing is i don't want to bore you all with the details because as we're listening in 
um, looking at it. We get that information, whether or not they approve the planning board, whether or not they approve these items at the planning board meeting, they still come to us anyway. So even if they disapprove them or they disagree with them and they say they do not recommend, it still has to come to us for a vote. But there was one interesting thing in that, um, the, one of the things, or one of the takeaways I have from that meeting was, um, we have a lot of residents within the town and some of them do not necessarily know um, some of the services that um, we offer or that they can take advantage of. And also to, um, they, we have to figure out a way to get them to participate a little more within certain things that are going on in the town, especially closer to um, the Lawyers Road area, where that's an area that people may not necessarily know, but that's part of Indian Trail. I mean, Indian Trail being, you know, far and wide. So we have to figure out a way to kind of bring more of these people into the town, into some of the th events that we have going on. I know that we do, and, and that doesn't mean that town, town staff's not doing a good job. That is not what I'm saying at all. But I'm just thinking of other ways that we can get them to, to participate and not when they have some opposition or concern of a, plan, of a planning board item that's coming to them. So that's all I have. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope, that, bring, that brings us to the NCAPA article regarding IT and secret shortcut small area plan. Rocks. Great. Just wanted to make a brief announcement that uh, we were very honored to have an article that was written by our planning staff, KDC, and her counterpart at Union County Planning on the recently adopted secret shortcut corridor study. And so the council adopted that a couple months back. There's, an there's a call for kind of um, uh, journal type articles on what's going on in your local community. So Katie and uh, Mr. Hansen at the county teamed up and wrote this uh, really good blog article uh, that's on the NCAP, North Carolina American Planning Association website. And so it's going to be just, it's a great uh, exposure for Indian Trail uh, just to share what's going on in our community, but also we think it can help us introduce ourselves to other planning professionals in other parts of the state that may not be familiar with what's going on in Indian Trail. So I think it could have some positive you know, recruitment benefits as well long term just by introducing ourselves um, to the larger planning community. So we were very honored to have that uh, recognition, and uh, I'd encourage I think there's a, a link in your packet. Uh, we'd encourage you to read it as well. So thank you. Thank you. Congrats. That brings us to the amended ordinance number 304, grant awarded for IT Complete Street. Mr. Wadowitz. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Council. <clears throat> uh, tonight I'm asking you to amend our capital project ordinance number 304. We received a grant from uh, the North Carolina Department of Commerce through uh, uh, Dean Arp's office and uh, Todd and town, Pat, uh, town manager Patrick and myself worked on it. We received a $50,000 grant. Uh, we'll have three years to spend it. So we, what we want to do is increase the budget. Um, I believe it's for lights, Todd, and benches. Yeah. And we have three years to spend it. We have to re, uh, we're required to report back to them every six months. Um, so we'll stay on top of that. But. Uh, I'd like you to, to ask you to amend the budget so we increase it by $50,000 that came from uh, North Carolina Department of Commerce. Okay, we need a motion to amend to reflect the $50,000 grant and increase. Here's the amounts. It's, mm -hmm. it's 22 to 72. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, increase the budget by 50000 to 3972 Thank you. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to approve the increase of, to reflect the $50,000 grant from the Department of Commerce for the budget. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you, Thank you Jim. That brings us to the Miracle League. Patrick? I think we did invite uh, Mr. Drace, but apparently he's not here tonight. Do we want to table that? Uh, we could. Okay. Give him, give him a second chance. Yep. I, I right. just, I just like to mention that I think council made a decision to, to make a decision before the end of the year about uh, uh, the donation. I think so. Just want to put that before you. So if we're going to wait, we're going to wait until early January for that. Okay. So we'll. Quick look. Uh, the question. Um, 
We're, we're still waiting on the master park plan. Yes, we are. But uh, that's irrelevant at this point. When will, when will we see that? The master plan? Mm -hmm. What I'm working on right now is all the watershed area. So we're trying to identify how much left over that we could build on. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Crooked Creek Phase 2, but uh, probably 75% of that area is not usable. Right. So that's what we're trying to do right now. But uh, also we're waiting on the master plan that comes from the consultants so it, they could identify the top priority items, which is we're familiar with them. I don't think the draft is going to change much. But when we get that, then we move forward with the components where we can build on the Crooked Creek Phase 2. They're kind of related together, but I'm aiming to make sure that we get something to council before the end of the year on a concept plan. Um, did Mr. Dres give any inclination whether or not that he received the grant? Uh, I did, uh, Jason, I did turn it to Jason to have contact with Mr. Dres, but uh, I'll, I'll let Jason give us an update on that. Evening, Council and Mayor. I shot, uh, sent an email to Mr. Dres last week to invite him to the meeting to give us an update based on the fact that when he was last here, he did inform us that he would be finding out about the grant in November. I did not hear back from him. I was not sure if he would be here tonight or not, but I informed him he'd be on the agenda. I just haven't heard back from him. Thank you, Jason. Mr. Morris, you ask a <clears throat> good question uh, trying to relate uh, the ADA to what we're putting at Crooked Creek. I think now I'm kind of understanding where you're going with your question. Uh, we could find, if, if council ever decide to put an ADA baseball field, uh, we, we could do that on other properties. We do have a couple of properties that we, we could, you know, have it by itself, but the preference is to have it at Crooked Creek right now. So we need, after we come up with a concept, we will reserve an area for ADA baseball playground and then come back to council and say, well, this is the concept. If you guys are okay with the concept, we could reserve that area for a future uh, uh, ADA baseball field when the donation come in or when probably council decide to move forward with that. Um, so we waited as, as much as we could on this one. We can't wait any more. We have to move forward and try to at least build something before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, my, my frustration is the delays. Um, we've been patient. Um, you know, I'd love to see a field out there if it will happen, but if it's still just pie in the sky, at some point, it, the reality sets in that we need to, to do something. Okay. Can, is it possible to have uh, two, two types of presentations, one with and one without the ADA field? Uh, absolutely, we could do that, uh, just to give the council an idea. But I'd like to let Mr. Mayor and council know that with the field, we're going to have to provide parking. And, uh, uh, and parking, we're talking about ADA parking. Also, we're talking about restrooms also for the disabled uh, players. So, uh, and then uh, during my last trip uh, out of town, I, I did take some pictures about the typical field. Uh, most of the time, those fields, they have also seating areas for the parents to sit. They have piers and fences all the way around them. Uh, they have sheds on top to protect the people that are uh, waiting for while the children are playing. So, the costs, cost keeps adding up, and all what we've heard in the past is that, you know, three hundred fifty, three hundred eighty thousand dollars to put the rubberized material, et cetera, et cetera. But if you really want to do it all the way, you know, we have to fence it. We have to have locks because we can't allow anybody to walk in there and play on it. And I know several council members, including Mrs. Howe, been in one before. So. You know, we're going to evaluate all that, reserve the area with or without, come back to council and say this is what we have and, and let you guys make the final decision. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, oh Ms. Howe? The idea, which is the, uh, the field was to have it near the children that were unaffected and they felt more included. Right. But unfortunately, it's not working out that way with the property the way it's set up. 
we could position that field close to the zip line and close to the playground area where we have some parking too so we don't have to spend too much money mm -hmm. but it's not going to be close to the concession where you have the restroom it's not going to be close to the ada playground that we put all the way on the other side yeah. so we need to be a bit creative kind of to accomplish that goal uh, mrs howe and they need <coughs> excuse me they need a, a, a area to keep the kids in the shade so that's right because of the that's right, and I'll be more than happy next time to uh, uh, share with you some of the photographs that I took from out of town, just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. Sure. I've been to several of the parks, and uh, the concept is great. We just thought it would be way <coughs> the program here by now. Thank you. Patrick, we're straying a little bit from the original topic here of okay. let's pull it back. We're either going to vote for what you intended or come back with another presentation specifically for where the field's going to go. This is the same conversation that's been going on for three years. Uh, my suggestion is to table it and actually make a phone call to Mr. Dres and give him the opportunity verbally, assuming, let's say, he does not have a computer anymore, to come in and say whether or not he's got the grant. That's what this is specifically for. But we're moving forward, though. Bring, put it on the, yep, as soon as you get a hold of him. Uh, I would say, Council, if you don't hear back from, with him by the last meeting of January, make a decision if he avoids it, which I'm sure he's not doing. And the money donated, or the that's, donated, that's gone. That is not up to the Council. We're not part of that nonprofit. It's not up for a discussion. <clears throat> that is strictly governed under the rules of a 501c3, which is currently governed by Mr. Dre's board, okay. not the Town Council. Um, okay, Patrick? Yes, sir. We got Is that it. okay with ca Thank counsel? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That brings us to new business, waste connections, recycling materials, Mr. Sadik. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last week we received uh, a letter from uh, Waste Connection. Simply, the letter was talking about the global development of recycling. As you all heard, uh, China is no longer accepting recycling material. Uh, mainly, well, actually, they used to accept recycling material that had 30% contaminant. They changed their quality control to a point that they can accept anything that has 0 0.02 contaminants. So this is like close to clean all the way. So uh, what Waste Connection is putting on the table right now, they're saying that because of that, there'll be an extra charge of ex approximately $297,000 per year, $24,750 per month. And this annualized cost burden, they, they like us to work with them. So in their letter, they kind of gave us five options. It could be a combination of any of those fives. Uh, Jim and Adam, they came up with an excellent suggestion just to start with, is that if we reduce uh, uh, the recycling pickup from twice a month to once a month, we probably save about $220,000 out of the 280, correct? So that's one option, but the option that they presented before us is give them the cost, which is, I don't think we're gonna go that route, and Karen uh, is, is looking at our contract right now to give us uh, some advice. Uh, retain the recycling material ourselves. Well, we don't want to retain it. We don't know what to do with it. We don't have any landfill or places, conveyors to separate the material. Uh, but simply to talk about, just to give you an idea about the contaminants, what they mean by that is plastic bag, glass, uh, scrap metal, uh, styrofoam, all that stuff, when you take it and put it on the conveyor, you can't just let it continue with the rest of the recycled material. Uh, uh, human have to be there on either side of the conveyor to pick that material. So, uh, but that's the material that China will not accept. There are some companies right now that are sending the material to India and uh, other places in Asia, but a lot of U.S. citizens, they are concerned that if it's taken and put in a landfill, it doesn't matter. It's the globe. It's impacting all of us. So some of them, they're preferring to find a solution to it here in the States 
uh, rather than shipping it somewhere and not knowing if it's going to be in a landfill or, or it's going to be uh, uh, recycled. Uh, simply what we're going to do is we have a meeting next Monday. Adam, Jim, and I, we're going to meet with the uh, uh, Waste Connection, and we're going to understand more about it. And we kind of know we have kind of some ideas about which direction we're going to move. Well, uh, and as soon as we hear from Karen about her recommendation, we'll tell them what we're planning on doing, but we'll definitely keep counsel. If we see that we're not going anywhere, we will table that until the meeting in January. This item will not take effect with Waste Connection until January, so we have time to do that. But we want you to be aware of uh, uh, the issue. It's not only us, it's almost every town and county in America because simply China is not accepting anything unless you comply with that 0 0.05 contaminant. A couple questions. <coughs> Go ahead. Um, so one of the suggestions is to move to once a week recycling, sorry, once a month versus twice a month. That's one of the options. Um, if we do take that option, who's to say that my recycling bin fills up you know, this week, I'm just going to put the rest in the garbage every time. So right there, we've not really solved the problem. But from a global perspective, from the environment perspective, that's that's one big red flag that I have. Because the thing is, people do need to do that, right? One of the things that we did promise people is that we weren't going to raise the taxes. We saved some money on this new garbage contract. And they were able to get two, month, two weeks uh, recycling every other week, essentially. So that's one. Two... How much money did we actually save by using that, using these, this company? For, and I don't have those numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to get them off the top of your head, but I'm going to ask for them essential uh, um, to, to provide to us so we can have sort of an, a good baseline to compare. Um, what, is, what savings did we get by going with this company versus the other one? And two, um, if I could get a copy of the letter, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, I'd like to get a copy of the letter to take a look at it. Because the thing is, we're talking about a very short space of time from now. Let's just say December. We're looking at January to kind of go up by, what, $297,000 um, per year. It's, per, it's annual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, let's just say right now, and we, our contract operates on a, on, on, a, on, a, uh, this, our fiscal, on a fiscal year basis, right, just like always do. So look, we are looking at about, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, roughly. You know, three hundred thousand divided by two, one hundred and fifty. So, that's a significant cost, if you ask me. That that we're being asked to pay, um, and there hasn't been any, you know, warning. It's not like we got six months to kind of, you know, remedy to 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 find a resolution, to find some remedy. But um, if I can get these things out, I'd, I'd kind of like to do that. Take a look at that because the thing is that uh, that I think is somebody just bringing some. Significant costs on us when we went into a contract negotiating with them with good faith, and I mean, if it's there for if it's you know poor planning on their part, not realizing that you know China has stopped accepting these materials from the rest of the world. Um, I mean, it's not all it, the residents shouldn't have to pay, or the town shouldn't have to pay for these guys planning, you know, doing poor planning. Uh, I'm, I'm that that's something that I'm gonna have some a hard time kind of looking at. By, by contract, if I'm not mistaken, Jim and Adam are here right now. They have to continue providing the service. No, I, I understand. I am not expecting them to stop. Right. But my concern is for us to try to not bear that cost, reducing the level of service. Right. Um, that is where the red flag, and I know that's not, you're just kind of giving us, hey, here are the five worst case. We have to choose the best option. Right. But this is not on you, by the way. This is me. Waste Connection is not here right now, so I can't really, you know, talk to them. But I'd like to say to them that, I mean, that's, that's on you. When you come back next time when you want to negotiate the contract, we can certainly look at that because your costs have gone up and we've un we understand that. But, I mean, just all of a sudden spring it and tell us, yeah, hey, in 30 days this thing is going to go up, yeah, the residents wouldn't be happy at all. Uh, no, uh, I'm not sure, Adam, have you? If you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Can I speak for one moment, please? <clears throat> Sorry. Patrick, you brought this on all of a sudden as an informational thing, mm -hmm. 
and by mentioning it, there's 5,000 questions just from your one minute thing. Council, if you would, allow him to gather the information, get accurate information, even bring Waste Pro in to show what's happening. We are under no contractual obligation to change anything we have. They have no out clause to raise the price. We, they did not build in anything to change recycling. The only obstacle we have with this contract is if this uh, increased cost to Waste Pro becomes so much, they would have to exit the contract. That is all that's happening here. We're under no obligation. Um, you, every question you're gonna ask right now is gonna bring on 10 more. I respectfully ask the council let Patrick get the facts straight and put together a presentation at the next meeting. Yeah, I would like to do, Mr. Mayor, is provide the letter tomorrow to council just to, so you get exposed to it. Uh, Karen and I and Adam and Jim will continue working on this and definitely we'll do all the research. Good suggestion, Mrs. Howe, and we will do that one too. Make a copy. <laughs> is it possible to get a copy of the contract? That's absolutely, more important to absolutely. Me than the letter necessarily. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. Council okay, Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Patrick. We, uh, what I was trying to do here is I didn't want to wait too long. I wanted oh. to expose council to the issue that we have around. Oh, I understand. You, you know we're going to ask questions once you come. <laughs> oh, I know. That's what happens for years and years of, of corporations sneaking garbage into recycling stuff to China. <laughs> they finally woke, got wise. Um, yeah. That's a good, that is a good answer. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to the town council December 20th meeting. Council, Patrick, do you have any pressing business at this time that needs to be put on an agenda for a meeting for the week of Christmas? No, uh, no if I want to put any business item on the next meeting, it would be, as an example, the recycling, which is we, we have to do, take our time to come up with the data and talk to Waste Connections, so I wouldn't say on the 20th. And also tax fire, tax fees. Uh, I need uh, uh, Johnny Blythe and I. We met today. All the chiefs have to work together. They're not going to be giving us a product before the next meeting. But I would say these are probably the main two items that, if I want to have, I will put them on December the 20th. Okay. Other than that, uh, we don't have any big items to have it okay. during that time. Council, might I make a suggestion that we? tentatively cancel the meeting if he has these items we just call for a special meeting with these items on it but that's up to you council school lets out that day people will be going on vacation are you saying that you you need more time for the fire tax and this garbage contract um, and that you will not put them on uh, de December, in other words, no. December 20th is, is too soon for you? Yeah, it's, uh, for the fire chiefs, it's too soon. They have to come up with a plan, so we can't put it. So you're looking at January for these items? That is correct. So what, do you have anything that you need to add for December? Most of the item, if we have anything, will be update, and we could provide update in emails or, or okay. reports. So at this point in time, you have nothing that you will add? No, sir. We Thank will you. make sure that everything we need to provide to you will be on the manager's report. Thank you, sir. Okay. Make a motion that we cancel December 20th meeting. So heads made a motion to cancel December 20th meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Let the record stand. All were in favor. Mr. Morris opposing. Patrick? If you do find something that's of importance for town business, please let me know and I'll be happy to call a special meeting. Absolutely. And let council know. So moved. Uh, that brings us to the revised 2019 council regular meeting schedule, which should have been updated in the packet. It is. Council's okay with everything that's been updated from the last meeting? Then we'll need a motion to accept that. I'll make a motion. Mr. Morris made a motion. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the manager's update. Do you have anything for this evening, Patrick? Yes, sir, I do, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Thank you. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, we hired uh, Adam, hired two employees to replace two, that one of them retired and one of them had to leave. 
And we also, Todd has uh, 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 interviewed one engineer, probably be on board at the end of uh, January. And Rox is in the process of uh, hiring one planner right now. Uh, that's on employee, employees recruitment, the Veterans Memorial. We have everything ready. We're just waiting on the prefab concrete. Uh, budget and investment, Jim and I, we're going to get going. Uh, uh, early January, we're going to start putting uh, budget together, so we'll be ready for our March meeting. Uh, projects, we're, we're uh, focusing on First Avenue and Indian Trail Park. These are the two projects that we want to make sure they don't, it, they're flood-related, so we're, we're kind of taken off with these two projects, so no more people out, out there will be harmed by any flooding or rain or snow. North Carolina DOT, we uh, thought beginning to have a monthly meeting with them, so from now on, we're going to have every month meeting with DOT. IT Complete Street, uh, I know Mr. Morris and Mr. Uh, had attended the meeting. We've already making the changes. We should be coming back to the public within four weeks. And we definitely have to have a public meeting in addition to the stakeholders meeting. UDO, Rox, uh, reported on that. Uh, Jason should be receiving the park master plan, hopefully sometimes this week. Uh, all staff and Jason got involved with that and we made edits. Uh, Crooked Creek phase two, uh, as I, uh, 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 reported, I am really, really putting a lot of time to evaluate the area that we, where we could build some structures out there. Appraisals, we ordered six appraisals for six properties that we own. Uh, Mr. Gary Evans, he, he has a high profile meeting tomorrow with Childress Klein that uh, interested uh, to see what we're doing in uptown and downtown. Uh, Brandon Oaks, uh, Todd is a building uh, a sidewalk out there. There is a gap in one area that there was no sidewalk. That's dangerous, so they contacted us. It's about 200 feet long. We're going to go out there and construct it and also probably install stop signs and uh, speed humps that were kind of approved by us. Uh, some, of, uh, some of the costs of that are going to be uh, uh, taken by the developer for Heritage Subdivision that was one of the things that they committed to. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff in Brandon Oaks. Uh, First Avenue, the concept that staff came up with will save 50% of the original design cost. So we came up with a methodology to save approximately, I, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but probably about $500,000, $600,000. Maybe, we won't try. Uh, <coughs> Down property, uh, Karen is going to help us uh, start the process, putting it out there 30 days before the public. We did receive one offer to purchase. Now it's time to move the sec next step, so Karen is helping us with that. Uh, simply, the restriction on that property is three stories, uh, commercial at the bottom, residential on top, townhomes or apartments or office, two story, three stories. So uh, we, we have a uh, room to pick and choose there and work with the developer because we're looking to densify downtown, uh, uptown, I'm sorry. Uh, VMPs, uh, uh, all the ponds, <laughs> all the ponds in Indian Trail, uh, they have to be inspected by a professional in engineer every year, once a year. So Todd has taken on that program, making sure that we contacted all of them, we send them letters, and now we need to monitor and see if they're doing it yearly. That's a requirement by the state. Uh, Chestnut Parkway, um, we're evaluating right now whether it is it for our best interest to turn it to DOT or keep it. Uh, Parking is an issue. We don't want to lose a lot of parkings and development access management to development. Also, another issue that might that DOT, if we give it to DOT, might turn around and don't allow that. So we're working with them. We'll evaluate and come back to council. Uh, fire tax, fire fees. Like I said, I had a, a meeting with Johnny Blythe today. He's going to get back with the three chiefs, come up with a plan, present it to us. So and he'll come in, present it before council, and he's planning on doing that for every jurisdiction. 
Um, the last item is North Carolina Department of Environmental and what? Uh, uh, North Carolina Diener. What they do right now, we when when a, a site is developed, we take care of the civil part, meaning anything outside the building. North Carolina Diener, they take care of sediment and erosion control. And they're getting so busy, and they also charge fees for that. Most of the time, when we go to the site, we get involved with sediment and control, uh, erosion control. So Todd is getting the information right now. If we could take that program, and I think they will give it to us, that will make it easy on us, rather than waiting on them. They're not responding. We're going to the field anyway. We could do both jobs at the same time, and we could generate fees. So all the fees that they generate, we'll be able to generate it ourselves. So when we get all the information, we'll come back to council and say if they approve that program. But it's it's win-win situation if we take it. Mr. Mayor, I think that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to council comments. Karen. Hope you have a great holiday, and I'm glad that we canceled that last meeting. And the reason I'm glad is most of you have children uh, or family you have to go see out of town, and that extra day or so that, that you ended up having here you didn't have to work through a late a late evening meeting. It's very important having had children and going living away from family and having to drive somewhere each holiday was was really a problem. But I'm glad we were able to do that. And I wish you all a very, very Christmas. And keep smiling, you guys are doing a good job. Thank you. Mr. Head. Uh, <clears throat> condolences again to um, the Crump family and uh, the Kathy family. Um, the, uh, the Rotary providing us with $21,500. Um, excellent. We, uh, we really appre appreciate that. The, uh, uh, staff, we say it all the time, but I think it, every every meeting we come to, um, it's highly warranted, and, and we continue to see um, how we we keep that the, the momentum that we've got continues day after day after day. So uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, again, I like. Uh, Ms. Howe, uh, I want to wish everybody a, a very happy holiday season um, and uh, uh, looking forward to a brand new year. Everybody drive home safe and thanks. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you. Um, staff, and last time I, I was here and I was saying thank you to staff, uh, Mike, you were right here, and, but you were sitting up with us, so I didn't get a chance to do recognize you, so I'm going to start with you and tell you, Mr. Parks, that um, thank you very much for all that you do, um, Adam and everybody else, Jason, Rox, you name it, um, everyone, engineering too as well, Todd, thank you. For all that you guys do, all your staff, everything that goes into this meeting and just keeping the town running. Patrick, uh, I think you lead a very good team. Um, we're appreciative of the job that you guys are doing. It's been a very good year, I think, for the town. We were, able, we were able to pass a budget this year and not raise anybody's taxes, which I think is very good. And um, the town is growing. Um, people are seeing some of the improvements that are coming through the town for the growth, so we appreciate that. Council has been, um, I, I think I started up here sometime in February, so it's been almost 12 months. I'm just going to say it's been a year, you know, because sometimes we do spend a lot of time together. But it has been great to work with each of you guys. 
whether or not we have um, agreements or disagreements, it is never something where we um, get into any deplorable actions. It's always very civil, and that way we respect each other and we do work together to find a consensus in order to achieve the goals of the town and, and what we want. Um, tonight, for the first time, I actually forced my three sons in the back to come to the town council meeting because um, their mom is out of town for work, so I told them it would be a good time for them to kind of come out and sit here. Um, surprisingly, the little guy is the only guy who's actually been paying attention. That's Cameron there. <laughs> He's the only guy. The two other guys were kind of busy on their phones, but um, they, get, they, they always ask me, you know, when I come home, kind of what I do, so they, they got a chance to do that. And tonight I made sure that I passed one, I, I put one or two motions in there so, you know, they could see that. But thank you. Um, last time I went ahead and said, <laughs> our, our note taker, I apologize for that. All right. Kathy, our town clerk, we, we appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Uh, um, and each of you, to all your families, have a very good um, holiday. To all the people who serve on the various boards and committees within the town, thank you for your service. You know, it's voluntary, but we do appreciate it. And um, Mayor, thank you very much. You're my right-hand man there. You keep me in check. I appreciate that. But have a very good holiday, everybody. Thank you very much. Mayor Alvarez. <clears throat> Staff, I concur with my colleagues here. You do an excellent job, even for our note taker over here. <laughs> I read the heart, not the words. <laughs> um, thank you to the Rotary Club for not only presenting the check for 21,000 plus, but for reminding us what this memorial is going to stand for and why it's so important. When the memorial began, I remember seeing Mr. Crump come to that podium in tears, asking this town to pass that. He'll be looking down proud of, when, of it when it's completed and we'll be proud to honor him with it. Um, it's tough to lose someone so near and dear. I'm going to personally miss Mr. Crump very much and his wonderful hugs. He lit up a room. He was a true American hero. Landing on Normandy, fighting for this country, and setting an example with a bar so high for his civic service well into his 90s. May God hold my friend in his hands for eternity, and may he rest in peace. My condolences go out to Sheriff Kathy on the sudden and unexpected loss of his wife. Uh, our hearts are, are heavy with the news that came across, and we are always here for you, Sheriff Kathy. Um, I want to wish you, uh, Jim, I'm going to single you out tonight. You do a great job, contrary to the <clears throat> words that are trying to be forced upon you anonymously. Uh, we appreciate having you here. Uh, you're, you're a man of honor and integrity. And thank you for your service to this town. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a very blessed holiday season, regardless of what your faith is. Stay close to your family. Remember, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Take today and cherish it, and remember those that are serving overseas that cannot be home with their families at this time. And say a special prayer for our first responders and law enforcement officials as they work through the holidays. Thank you for your service to your communities. Everyone have a wonderful night. Have a safe trip home and a blessed holiday season. God bless. Merry Christmas, everyone, and, and happy Hanukkah to my Jewish friends. Um, hopefully you'll get to spend a bunch of time with your family and friends and remember the reason for Christmas. And there's always someone out there that could use a helping hand, and someone that's always um, a little less fortunate than, than yourself. And if we can just remember that and remember our president that just passed and how... <coughs> 
how one of the things that he, I remember about him is a thousand points of light and how we can all be that point of light. And so that's our challenge in life is to be that for, for ourselves and for each other. So I um, hope you all have a Merry Christmas and uh, see you next year. Is that all? Okay. Council. I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Mr. Morris made a motion to adjourn. All in favor? That's unanimous. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>